So David, take it down to the practical because people are working in jobs, they're working overtime, they're remotely coming in to meet their teams, they're trying to struggle with children at home and ambitions to get promoted. How do you apply your, your philosophy to that kind of humdrum existence where you can barely breathe and think philosophically? Yeah, well, I break it down to daily practices. And those daily practices take into account our new year resolutions. It takes into account our midterm objectives or even our long term objectives. But in essence, we're given 24 hours a day of activity that we have planned, we don't have planned. 24 hours a day of activity we get paid for and we don't get paid for. 24 hours a day where we need sleep which is a major focus of what I do and uh, utilizing an unwinding routine to start my tomorrow today by effectuating sleep, which is the most underused asset that we have. It's so unfortunate that the majority of the people on earth go to sleep at night and wake up more tired than when they went to bed. That's foolish going out to eat for two hours and ending up hungry. It doesn't make any sense to me. But being able to utilize the 24 hours a day of activity with five daily practices in order to be more productive, to provide more value, to be more accessible, connected to more people, but also access or receive more and more gracious to be able to find the light, the love and the lessons in what we do. And so I created these five pragmatic practices that I give away to everyone. I write about them in my books and I encourage anyone out there to email me. I'll be happy to send you the five daily practices of knowing your what, your who, your how, your now and applying your why. And I have an email there, david at dmelzer.com for anyone interested in those five daily practices. I would love that also. I'm going to make sure that I do that. Give us one, David, just one. So my, my favorite is applying our why. So many of us, as I suggest, are searching for their why. They're searching for happiness, health, wealth, and worthiness. And the fifth step, after you know what you want, who can help you, who you can help, how to get it done and prioritize that by what's important in knowing your now, applying your why changes your life. So what I do is teach a four-stepped pragmatic approach of one, identifying what it is that interferes with you and your potential. Here's some of the things that I have realized in my life. One, the need to be right, the need to be offended, the need to be separate, inferior or superior, the need to be anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, you know, the need to worry. Worrying's duplicative in its negative nature because not only is it interfering with your health, happiness, wealth, and worthiness, but it actually is manifesting or wishing for what you don't want. And how much time, energy, emotion, and money do we spend worrying? What I teach people in the context of applying our why is one, identify these ego-based consciousnesses and instead of fighting it, resisting it, going over it, under it, through it, around it, lying to it, manipulating, cheating, overselling, and back end selling it, simply stop, right? Utilize surrender in us to stop, breathe through our nose, out through our mouth, and then remind ourselves of the what, the who, the how, and the now and roll in the right trajectory. In other words, if we can identify the ego, if we can identify the interference, we know that our mind, our body, and our soul are on fire when we're in ego-based consciousness, when we're worried and angry and frustrated and guilty and resentful. If we stop, when we're on fire, drop and roll, just like our moms taught us, catch on fire, you gotta stop, drop and roll, we can accelerate, grow, and expand aligned with synergistic and supplementary to an expanding, growing uh, universe and living in this value-add game, not a zero-sum game. 